Welcome everybody and today's video is all about photographing insects out in the field. I'm going to give you six tips to help you with things like sharpness, uh, general approach and depth of field. Now bear in mind these tips aren't going to apply as much for setup in the studio type work. They're really designed to help you when you're out in the field photographing insects handheld in natural light. Number one is to do with the type of focus. So should you use autofocus or manual focus and I would encourage you to try both with your camera gear and just see how they work for insect photography. Uh, particularly I think if you're a beginner uh, give both a try and see which works best for you. Now if you're using autofocus I would suggest that you use the tracking autofocus. Uh, it's going to be a continuous autofocus called servo on Canon. Now this is probably going to be better for larger insects such as fairly big butterflies and perhaps dragonflies and probably more suited to bright light like I've got this morning. Now if you are going to use manual focus then there's different techniques for that I'm going to cover later in this video. So I'd encourage you to try both autofocus and manual, get to know your equipment and see how it works out in the field. Tip number two is your angle of approach. I think this is really, really important. I've mentioned it in a few videos, so it's kind of a refresher for some people. Uh, when you are approaching that insect that you've seen that you want to photograph, you want to judge your angle. So if you're approaching it, maybe it's resting, you're coming from the side, maybe it's a butterfly on top of a flower. You want to try and approach it so you keep the back of the camera as parallel as you can uh, to that angle that you're shooting from. So you're keeping everything nice and flat. If you do that it's really going to help your depth of field. I think it's one of the most important things you can do for insect photography in the field. So this means that you might have to kind of plan your approach when you see the insect just look where it is and think what is the angle you need to get to and then you might have to sort of plan exactly where you're going to go like the easiest route which is going to cause the less disturbance and then get into that position try and keep everything nice and parallel and maximize your depth of field. Now this is going to work particularly well with insects that are naturally more flat, uh, so a lot of butterflies, maybe some hoverflies for example, uh, but it is going to be more difficult with anything that's a bit more curved, but we'll come to that later in the video. One of the things I also like to do with this approach is often to put my, my left leg forward and use that as a pivot. So rather than just going in with the whole body and that potentially causes more disturbance, um, I like to stay a bit further back and put one leg forward, far enough forward that I know that will get me close enough to the insect with my lens and then I just kind of use that as a bit of a pivot and you can move forward nice and smoothly like that, move back if you need to. Next up is a manual focus technique. Now manual focus is my preferred option, I do it most of the time for my insect photography. Uh, I generally feel like it's more accurate, I just feel more comfortable and I find sometimes with autofocus, depending on your equipment, sometimes when you're getting very, very close, the autofocus might struggle to keep up with that fast moving insect at such close range. Now with manual, uh, if you're using the manual focus ring, which would seem like the sensible thing to do, that can be difficult. You're trying to do a lot of things at once. When you're getting really close and everything's magnified, you're trying to compose the shot, you're trying to keep everything nice and steady, and you're trying to focus as well well it's all very very difficult so the technique I like to use is basically what I'll do is get myself roughly into position if I imagine there's something on this I think it's gelder rose here these little berries uh, if I imagine I get myself into position roughly the filling as much as the frame as I want to and then I do a rough focus and then what I'll do is actually slightly move forward and slightly back so I'm focusing not by twisting the focus ring but by moving my subject, by moving my camera to subject distance. So that's how you're focusing instead. Uh, again, the reason I like that is because I think there's just less to do. So rather than having to do everything and tweak the focus ring, you can just focus it probably once and then you just focus in by moving forward and back. Now, where should you focus? This is a question I hear sometimes, is where exactly should you focus? When you're getting really close for your macro photography with insects, your depth of field gets really, really small, really narrow, so your focus becomes very critical. Now, 
Probably traditionally the answer is to focus on the eye as you would do with a lot of things or at least try and focus on the head and this is fairly good advice in general but I don't necessarily think it's as simple as that. Now if you were to take something head on for example I've got an image here of a gorgeous blue tailed damselfly which was taken on a one to one workshop recently. Some really good opportunities that day. If you look at this image it's really, really simple for focus because the damselfly is looking straight at me. I'm just going to focus on those eyes as much as I can. The focus is nice and simple. Now, if you were to take a butterfly, let's say we're approaching a butterfly from above, butterflies can be relatively flat with the wings out, uh, but even so, they can still have a slight angle. If you were to photograph on the head, for example, you might find that the wings aren't as sharp as you'd like. So I've got an image here which is uh, really cropped down so you can see this uh, uh, in more detail. This close-up of a butterfly, I've, I've purposely fo focused on the head. The head is really, really sharp, but if you look throughout the body and the wings, you'll start to see that the sharpness just drops off, so it doesn't have uh, quite as much sharpness and detail in there. Now, it's going to depend to an extent on your shooting angle, as we talked about earlier, how parallel you are uh, to that subject. But what I tend to do now, my general focusing technique with this, is I kind of, rather than focus on the head, I tend to sort of aim for where the wings meet the head or the wings meet the body, kind of that joining area. I find that's a good area to focus and gives me good results. Now the problem with the focus becomes exaggerated even more when you get in really, really close. So let's say you've gone beyond the whole body image, body image, uh, there's a lot of body image these days, <laughs> you've gone closer than just filling the frame with the subject and you've gone in closer on part of the body. So for example this image here of a dragonfly, uh, my shooting angle I couldn't get flat to it as I wanted, really frustrating. Uh, so the image that I was left with it didn't seem to make sense to focus on the head. I would have had a sharp head and everything out of focus. I didn't really like that effect so I chose to deliberately focus here uh, on the body of the insect. Again pretty close to where the wings are joining the body and to concentrate on that detail. So when you do this it becomes maybe a little bit more of an abstract, a little bit more creative. I do think when you're getting really really close then you kind of need to be more selective about exactly where you're focusing. Now I mentioned earlier about curved subjects, curved balls. Um, it's easier with anything that's flat, so that just makes sense for your depth of field, but with insects like flies, some hoverflies, bees would be a good one. When you're getting close, because they are relatively curved, that makes the focusing even more difficult. So what I'd say there, again, you kind of want to play around with it. I would try and experiment uh, with those types of insects. Maybe from the side, it's going to work well to focus on the head. Maybe if you're shooting from above, it might be better to just focus a little more on the body. So you can see here with this example of this hoverfly, uh, I haven't focused right on the eyes, on the head. I've just kind of focus a little further forward onto the body very close to the head and I'm happy with how that looks. Next one is uh, tip number five, I think it is. This one is to do with depth of field and apertures. And it kind of goes hand in hand to some extent with your approach and choosing where to focus. Now, you might be someone who takes these kind of images for recording purposes, mainly just to record what you see and you want to get a lot of detail in there. And you might not be as concerned with some of the photogenic aspects. But I think for a lot of photographers, myself included, uh, we tend to want on reasonable depth of field in the insect and we want a reasonably out of focus background as well. I know I tend to, to fit into that camp. As we get in really close for our macro images, depth of field becomes much smaller and more difficult to manage. I've done a couple of comparison shots here with a painted lady butterfly, uh, taken handheld. I've tried to keep them the same composition, the same difference distance which wasn't easy to do but I think I managed it. Now you can see here for the first image this is shot at f4 and you can see really nice effects there. Uh, the butterfly looks fairly sharp but the background is really quite nice and diffused. I really like the look of that image. If we go to the next one at f8. So shot at f8 you can see immediately the background has come into the picture much more. If you look at the actual butterfly, you'll see though there's better sharpness, better depth of field. Uh, you've got the head is sharp and the detail across the wings is 
considerably better than the in the image at f4 but again that background because it's shot at f8 it must it makes such a huge difference uh, the background becomes more in focus and becomes a bit more distracting to some extent it's a case of deciding what you want to do which you prefer and it's often kind of a compromise so you need to look at the apertures that you think work for you one thing you can do is actually just to back off a little bit and this is something I've been doing recently in my own insect photography. So if we just come back a little bit then that's naturally going to increase your depth of field because you're a bit further away. Uh, this can work fairly well if you've already got a decent background and you can probably use fairly wide apertures as well. So to try and demonstrate this and see how it works um, i photographed a six spot burnet moth so again out in the field uh, handheld natural light and um, this is the first image i took and you can see there i've really tried to fill the frame largely with the moth now for the second image you can see i'm much further back i don't know how much further back but you get an idea uh, i've pulled back so the moth is much smaller in the frame and then what i've done later is crop that image down the second image so i've cropped it down to try and fill the frame roughly to the same amount as the first image. So the first image there is, is slightly cropped as well, I must add, but not very much. So it's, it's almost as it was taken in the field. And the second image is taken from further back then zoomed in and blown up to the same size. So it's quite interesting to see. Um, I actually think I prefer the second one where I was further back. Uh, they are very, very similar images. They both look pretty sharp. If you look at the second image, um, I just feel I'd, like the depth of field looks slightly more pleasing to my eye, particularly if you look at the eyes. It's quite interesting. If you look at the eyes and the antenna, uh, even the legs actually, they actually look a little bit sharper in that image than in the first one. So they're only a slight difference, but the reason for doing this really, uh, there's three benefits I'd say for just coming slightly back and zooming in afterwards. The first one is, as we talked about, you get that increased depth of field, so that might help you if you're looking for that. The second one is you can probably use a slower shutter speed, because if you're further away, everything's less magnified, so you don't need potentially as high as shutter speed to get a sharp image. And the third benefit, probably the most important one, is simply less disturbance. So if you can shoot the image from further away you're less likely to disturb the insect and have it fly off so this is going to depend to some extent on the camera and the megapixels obviously if you are going to crop it down and zoom in then the more megapixels is really going to help you to do that and tip number six is insect behavior now sometimes it can just be better to kind of let the insects come to you so if you're trying to get into position to get the best angle for the the best approach the best light etc uh, then sometimes you can kind of you can kind of end up chasing them which isn't always the best and the more likely to be disturbed if you have an insect for example land on a flower head then by their nature when it's warm enough they're probably going to move around quite a lot obviously if they're feeding this is something I've watched myself more recently and if you just watch a butterfly for example it's probably going to move around the flower it's probably going to put itself at different angles so rather than try and chase it um, if you just decide on the best angle for the depth of field and maybe the background and for the light and everything if you decide on that and put yourself in position the likelihood is that eventually uh, that insect is going to move around into that position so that can actually sometimes be a better option and again it's just a case of behavior just learning more about the subject the more you know it's a copper down there uh, butterfly not the other kind um, the more that you know about your insect that you're photographing the more successful you're going to be so with this kind of technique yes it's not going to be a hundred percent but I think you're going to get enough opportunities that it's pretty good percentage wise absolutely amazing colors today here it's absolutely gorgeous so do you agree with those tips there is there anything you disagree with uh, do you have a certain type of approach for getting close to the insects maybe you have a favored aperture that you just like to use for this type of photography uh, do you like to fill the frame or maybe you like to back off a little bit and then crop in later be really interested to know what you think about that one in the comments box below if you're not subscribed, then so click on the subscribe button to see similar videos like this one. And thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time.